So this is the outline of uh, chapter 26. So we will introduce the electric current, although you should know what is a, what is a current. And we'll also introduce the current density and resistance and resistivity. And we'll talk about the Ohm's law. You probably should have learned it in high school, physics. Uh, and also we'll talk about power and slightly talk about the semiconductor and superconductors. We will not go uh, into any depth about the semiconductors because for ECE students, they will learn much about the semiconductors. They will learn it for several semesters, uh, something like the uh, electronics, applied electronics, uh, microelectronic design, something like that, uh, IC design, something like that. It will be difficult because for the semiconductor, it is uh, highly Londinian. Uh, so the calculation is complicated. And for superconductor, it just uh, introduce a, a bit about it because uh, I have not learned much about that before either. So, yeah. Okay, for electric current, so it says any isolated conductor loop, regardless of uh, whether it has an excess charge, is all at the same potential, is all at the same potential. So for isolated conducting loop, so no electric field can exist within it or along its surface. So there will be no, uh, no E-bill, no E-bill. Okay, so now we consider if we insert a battery in the loop. So this is a battery with the positive and negative end. So the conducting loop is no longer at a single potential. No longer at a single potential. So the electric field acts inside the material, making up the loop, exerting forces on the external charges, causing them to move and thus establishing a current. So. So in this case here, uh, we have, uh, this is the positive end, this is the negative end, so the current will go in this direction. The current will go in this direction. And actually this is uh, opposite the, the, the direction of the electrons. So if you consider the electrons, uh, it should go from the negative end to the positive end, like that. So because at that time when when the physician uh, built up the theory of the uh, electric circuit, then they do not know there exists the electron yes. So the physician uh, figured out the existence of the electron in I think in ninety in nineteenth century, uh, not not that time. So they uh, define the conventional current direction, uh, assuming that the, the charges are mainly a uh, positive charge. So it defines the current <coughs> direction like this, from the positive to the negative, something like that. Okay, so in this case, uh, the electric field uh, here is not, or, or the potential is not, is not uh, uniform for this loop. Uh, actually, the, the electric field should go from here to, to there, so that this can push the, uh, the carrier or the, or the charged particles to move. OK, a section of conductor, blah, blah, blah. OK, so here it says the definition of the current. Definition of the current is uh, the derivative, the time derivative of the charges, uh, the time derivative of the charges. So if charge, if charge dq passes through a hypothetical, hypothetical, uh, which means it is just uh, in imaginary, so uh, in Chinese called jia se de, hypothetical plane, such as AA, such as AA, this one, uh, in time dt, then the current I through that plane is defined as uh, I equals uh, di dt. 
Okay. And here we will have uh, the so-called creature of current law uh, in short forms called KCL, not potassium chloride, not in chemistry. <laughs> so here is a creature of current law, the KCL. So yeah, so we actually have two law uh, invented by Kirchhoff. So one is called the Kirchhoff current law, and another one is called the Kirchhoff voltage law. Uh, Kirchhoff voltage law, KVL, KVL. So here we we talk about the Kirchhoff current law first. So a, a conductor with a current I zero splitting at a junction into two branches. So here you can see uh, this is this is uh, yeah this is a junction this is a junction A, and then the current I zero is coming from the left side to here and then it separate into two branches, I one and I two. So we should have uh, I zero equals I one plus I two because uh, you cannot uh, yeah because actually it is about the charge conservation, conservation of charge. Conservation of charge. Uh, yeah. Conservation of charge. Okay, so you cannot uh, create or discriminate the, the charges. So when you take the derivative, then the current should still be the same. Okay, so because the charge is conserved, the magnitude of the current in the branches must add to you the magnitude of the current in the original conductor so that I0 equals I1 plus I2. Okay, so even though you just uh, make the wire like this, so it's still I2. And usually it, it teaches you like uh, the sum of the the sum of the current going in a loop in a node, uh, in a node, in in here it call it junction, but usually I I call it a node. So a node, uh, a node. So it it usually teaches like uh, the sum of the currents going into a node is equal to the sum of the current going out on the loop. But usually I will try to consider. I will try to consider all the current to be going inside or going outside. Either of it is fine. Then I will I will consider it to be uh, for a node, all the current going into that node uh, will be zero, or all the current going out from the node should be zero. It it implies that some of the current might be negative, some of the current might be positive, so that they cancel each other. Because uh, suppose the circuit is uh, complicated enough, then if you consider some current going in, some current going out, then you may make some mistakes for the for the for the positive or negative sign. So usually, I would consider the current is going out from the node and then uh, KK uh, all the way like that, and then you will not uh, you will have less chance to make mistakes. Okay, so here it talks about the current density, uh, the current density. So the definition is uh, interesting. Usually when we talk about the definition, we usually well, suppose we try to define J. Usually you will consider the definition will be like J equals something, something else, something, something else to be a definition. But here we cannot do so. <laughs> So here we just have a uh, uh, J should uh, will be on the right side inside the integration inside the integration. This is actually the surface integration, not a closed surface integration, just an open surface integration. And this integration will be the current. So yeah. So this is the definition of the current density. Which is like uh, suppose uh, this is a wire. Maybe this this part is thicker. This is uh, this is thinner. So suppose we define uh, this is the surface. Uh, we just maybe yeah. 
maybe it should be something like like this uh, something like this so this is the cross-section area so we try to uh, integrate the uh, current density over this surface so that we know their uh, current going through this surface you know the current so current density is a uh, is a is a is a vector current density is a vector uh, but current is a scalar this is very important uh, this is very important current has direction but uh, it is not a it is not a vector current is a scalar current density is a is a vector so it is defined over the whole space over the whole space so so here we you have a you have you have j like this so for for this point you have j like this uh, something like that yeah so here it says uh, dA is a vector perpendicular to the surface element of the area. Uh, somehow similar to uh, how we uh, how we calculate the Gauss law. Uh, the only difference is that for Gauss law is a closed surface integral. Here is a just an open surface. Okay, so and the integral is taken over any surface cutting across the conductor. So you just try to cut it here or cut it cut it there. It should be fine. Yeah. So the current density has the same direction as the velocity of the moving charge if they are positive charges and opposite direction if the moving charge are negative so yeah so j should have the same direction as the as the current as the current so the stream as uh, the steam the streamlines uh, representing current density in the flow of the charge through a constricted uh, conductor so if this part is uh, thicker, then you can imagine the current density is uh, smaller. For this part, this is uh, thinner, then you can imagine the current density is, uh, is higher. Okay, so here, here it talks about uh, this equation, this equation. So let's see how we can derive this equation. So here, imagine we have a we have a wire, we have a wire, and we assume the current density, as uh, I mean the current direction is uh, from right to left. The current direction is from right to left. The length of this part is a capital L. And yeah, don't don't consider the the electron. So we we consider the charge carrier is positive charge. So uh, yeah. So in this case, we will imagine the positive charge is moving from right to left, uh, which is same as the current direction. So we define the V D to be the drift velocity, drift velocity of the of the positive carrier. And then there should be E view pointing to the left side because in this case the positive charge will go to the left side by the by the E view. And then as much as the the current going to the left side, the charge, uh, the current density. I mean the current density also point to the left side. Okay, so conduction electron are actually moving to the right. If we if we really consider electrons, but in this argument, uh, we don't really need to bother about it is a positive charge or negative charge. Both are the same case. But yeah, in in chapter twenty eight, for one of the arg argument, we need to consider which is a, a positive charge or negative charge. But we will talk about it later on. So here. Uh, but the conventional current I is said to be moved to the left. Okay. Okay. So here, here it says uh, the charge Q, the charge Q is the total number of electron. This is the number of electron, and this is the elementary charge E. This is the elementary charge E. 
E times the number of electron is the charge amount uh, inside this uh, region. Inside this region, so n is the n is the uh, density, the charge density, Ch uh, charge density, charge density. Uh, a is the cross section area. A is the cross section area. Cross section area. L is the length. L is the length. So A times L is the volume. Volume times the charge density is the total number of charge. Uh, and then times the elementary charge will be the total charge amount. So this is Q. And then it takes time to go from this point to this point. So the time here is T. So for primary mathematics, you know the length equals the velocity times the time. Uh, so we have a time equals L over VD. VD is the velocity of the charge. Of the charge. Okay. So uh, for the current, originally we have a uh, I equals uh, dQ dt. But if we assume uh, Q is a constant. Uh, or yeah, or dQ is a constant, which is nothing but uh, Q over T. Or you can write it as a delta Q over delta T. Or maybe you can write it like this. So this is delta Q. But yeah, here you just make it like uh, Q over T. So yeah, it's actually the same thing. So Q is uh, this expression. We have an N A L E. And then T is a L over VD, so we have L over VD here. Okay, so now we can make some cancellation. So this L and this L can be cancelled. Uh, so yeah, so we have N times E here, N times E here, and then we have A here, VD, VD go to here. So all together we have N E A V D, N E A V D. And uh, also, and also, uh, I equals integration of a uh, j times d a. So if j is a uh, uniform, then it is nothing but j a. Uh, and also, this cross section area is uh, perpendicular to the charge density. We have a uh, this integration to be j times a. So we have a uh, j equals i over a like this. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we just divide a on both sides. The a divide a on both sides. So this is j to be here, and then a and a can be cancelled. A and a can be cancelled. So we have n e v d on the right side. So this is a expression. The expression for yeah, which is called. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The the field version, the field version of Ohm's law. Field version of Ohm's law. Actually, when I learned physics, I was taught by a, a physics department professor. So. She liked this uh, equation a lot, but actually I, <laughs> I study double E, so I actually, honestly I, I have not used it anyway. <laughs> but yeah, actually she, she thinks that uh, this equation is very, very important. Uh, but yeah. um, and actually from my point of view, this is a version of the Ohm's law. Usually for the Ohm's law, you know uh, V equals I out. But yeah, but for this one, it is from the point of view of the circuit. So this is the voltage or potential difference. This is the resistance. This is the current. But it actually tells you the same thing. But uh, this is uh, related to some uh, physics variable. This is uh, current density. Current density should be related to this I. And this is VD. VD is the velocity of the of the charge and n e 
E is a constant. E is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 Coulomb. N is the charge density. Is the charge density. It, it might not be a constant uh, if the material change, but for a specific uh, for a specific material like uh, copper, then then it should be a constant. So which means that given a specific material, then this term N E is a constant. Then it says the the density, uh, the current density is proportional to the to the velocity of the of the uh, charge carrier. Okay, so yeah, so the carrier charge density n, and then the product n e is the charge density. So yeah, the charge density c over meter square. Yeah. Okay, so v d is the drift velocity, as I mentioned before. Okay. Okay, so here we have a sample problem to slightly play with the definition of the current density. Okay. So here you have uh, the current density in a cylindrical wire of radius capital R is uniform across a cross section of the wire. And is uh, J to be this value. What is the current through the outer portion, outer portion of the wire between radial distance, capital R over two to uh, capital R, which means it's only considered the current for this part, uh, for this part. Okay, so, um, yeah, so A, A prime, we consider the cross-section area A prime, and it is, uh, yeah, I mean the, the current density is uniform so that we don't really need to calculate the integration we just need the multiplication is fine so a prime is the is the area of this ring uh, is the area of this ring so we have a pi r square minus pi times uh, r over 2 quantity square so which is uh, nothing but uh, 3 over 4 pi r square over 4 pi r squared. Okay, and we can plug in the number 3 pi over 4 and then times uh, r squared is uh, 2 times 10 to minus 3rd power quantity squared. So this is uh, 9.42 times 10 to minus 6 meter squared. Uh, meter squared. Okay, so yeah, for this case, you should be very careful to write it as a mu m square because uh, it, it it is a bit uh, ambiguous, a bit amb ambiguous. It is like a ten to the minus six meter square, but for this one, it may be referring to mu m square. Then. This one and this one has a 10 to the 6th power difference. <laughs> 10 to the 6th power times difference. So, yeah, I try to avoid writing it like this. Otherwise, I should keep it like a mu m inside the parenthesis square to mean uh, it is actually a mu m times mu m. Okay, so in this case, i equals j times a prime which is uh, j is a uh, 2 times 10 to the fifth power and then times a prime is a uh, 9.42 times 10 to minus 6 so the current is a uh, 1.9 a 1.9 a okay so oops. okay so this one is uh yeah this one is not so difficult so for this for the for part b here the charge density is not uniform it the 
the uh, I mean the current density is not uniform. The current density is related to the radial distance. Uh, the radial distance j equals a r square. A is this number. Okay, so now what is the current going through the same outer portion? Outer portion still between capital R and R. So in this case, um, I equals integration of a j dot dA, and of course. Uh, they are parallel. They are parallel. So we only have a JDA. JDA. Okay, so in this case, um, J. J is AR square. So we have AR square. And then for the DA, DA, we. Here we have the polar coordinate. Uh, the polar coordinate. Polar coordinate is like, uh, like this. So. When we consider dA here, dA here, this is dR, and this is d theta, this is d theta. So this one should be r d theta. So dA should be dA should be uh, should be r d r d theta, uh, r d r d theta. Okay, so this dA dA equals R D R D theta, so it becomes R D R D theta, double integral. So for dR, we should integrate from uh, R over 2 to R, and then theta should be from 0 to 2 pi, because this is the whole square, uh, whole, whole circle, the whole, uh, or at least the whole ring, the whole ring, theta from 0 to 2 pi, okay. So here we have a integration of uh, r cube. We have r square and r. So we t all together have r cube dr uh, integrate from r over two to r, and then integration of uh, d theta uh, from zero to two pi. So this one is nothing but uh, two pi. This one is. Uh, r to the fourth power over four, so r to the fourth power over four minus uh, r over two quantity to the fourth power over four, something like this. Okay, so this is uh, fifteen over thirty-two a r to the fourth power pi. Okay, do some simplification. So this is a uh, one over four. This is one over uh, one over four times one over sixteen. One over sixteen. So this is a uh, one minus one over sixteen. So it is a uh, fifteen over thirty-two, and then over four, and then multiply by two. So we have a thirty-two here, and then we have a r to the fourth power and pi like this. Okay, so we can plug in all the numbers. 15 over 32 times A is this value, uh, 3 times 10 to the 11th power, and then times capital R. Capital R is 2, 2 mu m, 2 mu m, 2 times 10 to minus 3rd, and then pi. So the number is 7.1a, uh, 7.1a. So as much as uh, if we have a non-uniform uh, current density, then we need to play with the surface integral. Okay. Okay. So here. Here is another one that let me let me finish it. So uh, here it says, uh, what is the drift speed of the conduction electron in a copper wire with radius r when it has a uniform current? I assume that each copper atom uh, contribute one conduction electron to the current, and that current density is uniform across the yeah. So it uh, assume everything is uniform. And then, yeah. Okay, so here, here, uh, of course, 
or it asks you the the drift velocity, the drift velocity or drift speed. So if you still remember, we have a J equals N E V D N E V D. So as much as we need to find this one, we should have a V D equal uh, V D sorry V D equals V D equals J over N E J over N E. E is already a constant, 1.6 times 10 to 19, so we don't need to find it. N is, uh, N is something we need to find. N is something we need to find. J, J is okay because we know I and we know the radius, so we know the cross-section area. So we just find J by dividing I by the cross-section area. Okay, so the next thing is to find N. So N is the at number at number you need a uh, volume so it's split into three terms one is the at number mode which is the which is the uh, Avogadro Avogadro number and a six ta six point oh two times ten to twenty three so you should have learned it in a chemistry class in high school I, I suppose so this is N A atom per mole and then we have mole per mass and then we have mass per volume so mole mole cancel mass mass cancel so we all together have atom per volume to be the same as this one so mole per unit mass mole per unit mass we can check it in the appendix F like this for the copper and then also mass per unit volume which is the density of the copper we can also check it in the appendix so we get this value like this Okay, so yeah, so this number is uh, six point oh two times ten to the twenty third power, and then times one over sixty three point five four times ten to the minus third power, because we need to change this gram into kilogram. Okay, so times eight point nine six times ten to the third power. We also need to change this gram into kilogram. Okay, so this number is uh, 8.49 times 10 to 28th power uh, meter negative 3 power. Meter to negative 3 power. Okay, so we can plug in all the values. Uh, plug in all the values. Okay. So J, J will be. Uh, J is uh, J is actually I over A, and then we have N E here. So we have uh, I to be seventeen times ten to minus third power, and then N is actually this one, uh, eight point four nine times ten to twenty eighth power, and then E is a uh, one point six times ten to minus nineteen. Also A A is pi r square, pi r square is. Uh, pi times uh, r square, 900 times 10 to minus 6 power quantity square, like this. So this number is uh, 4.9 times 10 to minus 7 meter per second. So this velocity or, the, or, or, or this speed is very, very low. 4.9 times 10 to minus 7 meter per second so it's slower than a snail but yeah actually actually the point here is that if you just try to switch on or switch off the light uh, the electron doesn't necessarily go from the switch or, or from the battery to the to the light actually it will try to push the all the all the electron to go forward so that uh, yeah not, not necessarily go from the, the battery to to the to the to the light so the actually the the effective drift velocity would be quite low would be quite low because the electron will be go go somewhere and then it will collide with the with the atom or collide with the nuclear uh, and then it will try to uh, go to a, go into an other direction so the effective drift velocity is quite low. Okay, so 
that's all for today. Let me see you on Thursday.